Welcome to the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. I'm your host, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And this is where we dive in each week to give advice, tools, and tips for high achieving women leaders. And we talk about leadership purpose and its importance for you. I am a college professor, and when I am not doing that, I am speaking, writing, coaching, mentoring, and teaching high achieving women leaders how to find and not only find, but how to stay in alignment with their leadership purpose so they can make a meaningful difference right there in their career, leadership, or business. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Robin. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I appreciate you for listening in today. And in today's solo episode, I want to encourage us to think about passion. And as I've done in the past, I will share a story from my own experience to help you think about your own experience, life, leadership, and eventually leadership purpose. But for today, we're talking about passion. You the police? Those are words of a a little girl, maybe about five years old, standing on the corner as I had just pulled up in my car and stepped out. At that time, many years ago, I was working as a social worker for the state of Connecticut, and it was my job to investigate cases of child abuse and neglect. And back then, the they give you, you know, the social workers had a state authorized vehicle to drive. And on the doors of the car, there was a big seal that said state of Connecticut. And so when I pulled up in the car and the girl standing, the little girl standing outside on the sidewalk, she said, you the police? And it struck me because she saw me as some sort of authoritative figure because of the seal on the car. And I had just finished my training. This was my first time going out in the field, as they would call it, when you would go out of the office. It was my first time going out in the field on my own. Prior to this, I had gone out with a more experienced social worker and accompanied her for a few weeks after completing the six months training of in-house training related to the work that you had to do in their academy. And so now it's my first time out and I encountered this little girl and she asked me this question. And um, now looking back, it's a little bit comical in the way she said it, the way she phrased the question, you the police (laughs) <laughs> but the the sense of authority and who I was was an interesting point to start off that position. Now, let me fast forward to the end of my time. That was the beginning of my time doing that work. And now fast forward uh, almost six years later, and I'm coming toward the end of the time. I had been doing it for a while. I was experienced and This time, my task, so to speak, for that day was to remove two children from their home because um, it was clear that they had been neglected, primarily because of their, their mother's mental health issues. So I had the two little ones in, in the car. One, there were two little girls, cutest little girls. Both of them, blonde hair, blue eyes. The older one was about two and the younger one was just under one years old. And so I had them in the car and I was bringing them from their home to a foster home. And as kids are so intuitive in their own way, they knew that they weren't going back home. I mean, their mother tried to talk to them and explain somewhat before we left the home in her limited capacity. But anyway, she had given the older one a necklace, but it wasn't a necklace. It was candy sort of on a a decorative rope, a piece of candy in the shape of a pacifier. 
that formed a necklace. So she gave this to the older one and put it around her neck as a sort of goodbye. All right, so now we're in the car and we're on the way and, you know, my heart is just breaking. And they're looking, they're just looking just despondent. And so I thought, let me drive through the McDonald's drive through and pick up a couple burgers because often that would soothe the children in these moments. Uh, and so we went through the drive through and the older one is holding her burger in her hand, just holding it in her hand, not looking at it, not eating it, just holding it upright in her hand, just despondent. And I'm watching this through the rear view mirror in the car because they're now in the back seat. Then the younger one starts to cry and uh, not screaming, almost like sobbing, like she knew this kind of deep sadness. And the older one immediately took her necklace with the candy that looked like a pacifier that her mother had given her. She took the necklace and put it toward her little sister's mouth. And she took it. She was trying to soothe her. And I'm watching all this in the rearview mirror. And suddenly, tears start streaming down my eyes. And my heart was just broken. And somehow, in that moment, I knew I couldn't do this work anymore. I had been doing it for years. I had cases like that one and others that were horrific quite frankly. But in that moment, I knew that I had to move on. Now, that's a moment in time in the job, but overall in that work, what I realized was I started doing that work because it was important to me to make a difference in other people's lives. That was my mission. I was on this mission. <laughs> and if you uh, have been following these stories in, in these episodes, You'll hear that in an earlier episode, I set out to make a difference. So this journey that I've been on, this career journey has always been guided by this idea of wanting to make a difference. So I was in this position because I wanted to make a difference. But what I realized when I had time to reflect after that incident with those two children, the job was not suited to me, although I was making a difference. But what was missing was passion. There was nothing about it. There was no way I could engage my passions in that position. And so I set out to then find passion. And by the way, if you want to hear more about this story, all these stories that I, I mentioned here in the episodes will appear in a book that I'm finishing up uh, and chronicle the stories and my journey toward my leadership purpose in a fuller way. Okay, but for now, we're talking about missing passion. And I want to encourage you to think about passion in your own life. Not necessarily to leave a job, start a job, but in every case, whatever the case is, to think about and incorporate passion into your life and work. All right, so you might be saying, well, passion, we always hear about that, but what is it really? Let me first say what it's not. It is not purpose by itself, because I hear lots of people interchange purpose and passion. You find your passion, you found your purpose. And if you've been listening to me, you know that uh, purpose is not just passion, but it does include passion. It's one of the elements of what I call leadership purpose. So passion. Another thing it is not, it is not your talent. Some people say, well, find what you're good at. And then you found your purpose or you found your passion. I think they are distinct. What you're good at and what you love are two different things. It could be. So passion is not necessarily something you're good at, and it is not your purpose. It is an element. All right. So that's what passion is not. But what it is, is this deep sense of satisfaction when you're doing something or experiencing something or feeling something right? It's just you have a love for it. That is passion. And we don't take time, you know, I often say on these episodes, we don't really take time out of our lives to reflect. But if we think about it and take the time to do it, we could find those things that 
really, we really enjoy. But we get sidetracked because we hear things like follow your passion, which is okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that advice, but to say follow your passion, it's big. It's abstract. Like, what does that mean? And what is this one passion? And I agree with the notion that it's not just one passion. Of course, we have a variety of passions, right? We have a variety of activities that we love and enjoy. And uh, not all of them are connected to our work. In fact, Dawn Graham, who is a career coach, who wrote a, a book called Switchers, switchers. And it is for, as the name suggests, it's for people who are looking to change jobs or to switch jobs. And she too, like I do, says that follow your passions is not necessarily good advice. And she quotes in her book from Mike Rowe and says, don't follow your passion, but bring your passion with you. Don't follow your passion but bring your passion with you. Another way of saying that, and the way I say that is, just bring passion to what you're doing. Bring passion to what you're doing. Identify something you really enjoy and make sure you do that. Make sure you do that on a regular basis. And this is important because it allows you to have more energy, And the energy will keep you going. And it adds to your sense of meaning and happiness and anticipation. So it's important to do it. And the way you do it is to bring it into your daily activity or your weekly activity in your work, in your leadership, in your life in some way. So add the component of enjoyment. Stop and think about it. Ask yourself, am I enjoying anything about this? How can I make it more enjoyable from day to day? How can I make this more enjoyable? So if you readily look at your the tasks that you do throughout the day, throughout the week, pick one or two and say to yourself, how can I make this more enjoyable? And then do that. And that is uh, one quick and easy step to add passion into your work, into your leadership, into your life. All right. That's what I have for today for passion. I encourage you to go out and pursue it. Remember, one little step. How can I make this more enjoyable? All right, everybody. That's the end of our episode for now. And until next time, this is Dr. Robin. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. If you enjoyed it, Head on over and rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week and I can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Meanwhile, this is Robin signing off. See you next time.